D Converted Man here. I've got oh bleep, I didn't ask how to pronounce your name. Kristen. Is that right? Mm -hmm. I said it Kristen. right. I said a name right. It's, like, it's a well known fact that I can't pronounce names right. So uh, thing, like, I, people 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 mispronounce my name all the time, so it's cool. <laughs> I said it right. I said a name right. Oh god, I'm well playing known. YouTube as I'm doing that. Well, I know what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> Great way to start. So I wanted to interview uh, Kristen here uh, because I uh, found her through looking at Jordan Peterson's video, and it was on the side of you know related. And you are talking about freedom of speech. You're talking about um, social justice, warriors, feminism, politics, and things of this matter, and talking about racism. And you know, I'm a white guy. Um, I'm I'm very white. You know, I eat mayonnaise with everything and. You know, all the classic <laughs> tropes, I suppose. <laughs> and um, apparently it's not okay to be white. That's what I've been hearing lately. <laughs> and you're saying, you're telling me it's okay. So that compelled the bleep out of me to watch you and, and check out what you had to say. Uh, you're, you're fairly young. You're, you said you were uh, 22. So it's good to see somebody that's, you know, not been around forever, uh, red-pilling themselves, as they call it these days. I don't know. Mm -hmm all the lingo i'm not hip to it so what what brings you to this uh, political arena uh, and being aware that these things feminism social justice warriors post marxists all these big terms are out there how did you find out about any of that and what let's start with that basically how i found out about feminism and social justice and post-Marxism and things and post-modernism and things like that. Um, basically, I've been, I wanted to look at different perspectives to break free of the echo chamber that I was living in at the time. Um, at the, and then like, up until about 18 months ago or so, I was, I was, I was like a, either apolitical or, or, or just simply told everybody that I was a Democrat because that was simply what I was raised around. I was like, I, Fully didn't really have any fully. I didn't. I didn't fully have any idea as to what I truly believed. So I just went along with anything that I was just simply told. Like I was like uninformed of different ideas and stuff like that. And then next thing I know, black the, the July two thousand sixteen. There were these two. There were these two black men that got killed and and also with police with the with the police officers and. Dallas and Baton Rouge and I I was supporting Black Lives Matter at the time because I thought in my mind that they were unjustified shooting so I went with the Black Lives Matter bandwagon and then after after watching several after watching a few YouTubers videos like Andy Worski, Hunter Avalon, um, Blair White, some black guy and things like that I watched a few of their videos on, on Black Lives Matter perspective on it and then i research then i did more research on the black lives matter movement and and then i realized that they will push that's what i started to realize that they were pushing a false narrative that and i wasn't really down with that so in a way i kind of came to this conclusion myself as far as my it's like i have some conservative beliefs and i have some liberal ones too so if i had to align myself with anything politically i would consider myself center left because i have slightly more conservative views than i have slightly more liberal views than i do conservative yeah that was, i was going to ask what your political spectrum was i'm somewhat left of center as well last time i took a political test and it's slowly there's certain points where I'm tipping right, certain points I'm tipping left, and I find it's the same challenge I've had in my whole life, which is finding the balance between the two uh, ideas and being, you know, centered rather than all in on, on, you know, red or black or green. Well, green's an option, so, you know, <laughs> which one's, you know, in between all of those options and, and trying to be there rather than, you know, too much logic or too much emotion is bad, so you want to find somewhere in between that you fit um but yeah the the black lives matter but black lives do matter well yeah but all lives matter but saying all lives matter became 
racist to say? How does that work? <laughs> I don't know. Ask the SJWs. <laughs> right. And, and, and my, my other question would be, because I've seen this uh, print, printed and, and I've heard some people say this, that there's this desire for you happen to be a woman, you happen to be a uh, darker color. Uh, I don't know what you would call the, the color of your skin, you know, a mocha, chocolate, or, or what have you. I don't know. But, <laughs> so does that make but you black would be, huh? So does that make you vanilla? Yeah. Or, I, or I, mayonnaise, I, as Gazi Kota would say? Yeah, pretty pinkish, white. I, I don't know. I mean, it's not white. It's 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 whatever this, I don't even know <laughs> what color it is, what, what term it would be. But yeah, they're, they're you know, but is it, I've seen people say that they need more women to speak out. They need more uh, minority women to speak out. I'm like, but that's racist and that's uh, sexist. But at the same time, women will listen to women more than they'll listen to men because that's like how our brains work, generally speaking. Mm -hmm. So even though it sounds unfair to say, it's totally true. So from, you know, I don't want to say a black woman's perspective, because I don't even think that's a thing. But if that was a thing, is it easier to listen to somebody that happens to be your color and your gender? Or is that just something that is too much of a general idea? be quite honest with you like i don't really think i don't really think that matters because somebody just because somebody is the same color or the same gender that does not automatically mean that same ideas and that's what i don't get is like people at my people at my college and yeah a lot of my a lot of people at my college they think i'm supposed to i'm supposed to be connected to all black people or all women or what have you and the thing is that the thing that kind of pisses me off about this whole thing is that what if we have nothing else in common besides skin color and gender? Those are the most superficial things. So why would I base my relationships or friendships off, off of that? Everybody has their preferences and stuff like that, but that's just me. I, I never really felt the need to somebody because they were the same race or the same gender as me. That's stupid. And a lot of I met a lot of people of all races, and I met a lot of people with all races with smart ideas, and I met a lot of people of all races with really dumb ideas, and I see it every day. So wait, you're saying we should we should we should so, treat people as individuals, not as part of some group collective? Come on, no, exactly, <laughs> exactly can't be that easy uh that's being colorblind i've been told that being colorblind is racist that i don't want i don't care what somebody lo I, I don't care well at some superficial level you know i might say this person is attractive to me uh you know because it's part of how the brain works but i can overcome that and say well even though they may or may not be attractive to me superficially i'm going to find out what they're like because well if i want to be with them in any sort of meaningful way, their personality is going to matter more than their their superficial qualities, you know. So I can override it. Mm -hmm. It's like, well, you know. But with some people, of course, that are that are racist, where they can't see past the color of the skin, and mm -hmm. when you have people saying these things like. If you say the color doesn't matter, that makes you racist. Mm -hmm. It's like no, how would it, that that makes no sense to me. <laughs> not only does it not make any sense to me, but that doesn't seem to work logically. So, right. What right. Do, with the? Uh, go ahead. All right, you continue. I'm sorry. Oh, with the. Um, Social justice warriors, one, one question that gets asked a lot is, well, what does that even mean? Because I've been accused of calling the wrong people social justice warriors, uh, and that's why one person decided to uh, unfriend me and, and not watch my videos and, and actually dig into uh, me on a personal level. They, they attacked me rather than my position. 
mm-hmm. which is another thing I've seen quite common with the um, the people who don't have arguments. Let's say that. Yeah, uh, and the thing I was about to say something about that is like not only have I seen it, I've also experienced it too, because when I would when I would make an argument or making or have an opinion that goes against the mainstream opinion. I get attacked so viciously it's not even funny. And I remember I was having a discussion with somebody about Donald Trump being not being as bad of a president as Hillary Clinton would have been. I've gotten a lot of backlash from that. And people say, oh, my God, you're a black woman. How can you as a black woman think this way? And I'm like, excuse me, a lot of people have different opinions, regardless of skin color or gender. And in terms of calling the wrong people social justice warriors, and it's like I... I, t- I try to be careful of who I apply labels like SJW or alt-right to because people with, not everybody with progressive views are SJWs and not everybody with far-right views are alt-right. So I try to be careful with using that terminology. The only time I really do use that terminology is when somebody is so far into their views to the point where they go to the point where they don't even bother to look at any other perspective they they will attack anybody that has a different opinion and that's just messed up to me because if if we want to reach a common solution if we want to reach a common ground we got to be willing to listen to each other right right that they i got that too where you know i i I called this one person during a video or in in my comments or whatever i was like oh you're you're being like an sjw or something like that was very flippant very off comment and you're right you know i should be careful applying those labels or any labels to anybody because i don't want that done to me i want to say what my label is i'm a skeptic i'm an atheist i'm a you know centrist i'm equalitarian whatever the label is you know and I'm a human. I mean, that should be the first and maybe most important label, <laughs> you know. But, you know, rather than talk to me and, and say, you know, you were wrong about that and, and you, you, you know, you should apologize, which I actually did apologize to this one person for calling them a feminist when they weren't. <laughs> I went to the extra trouble of finding their Twitter and, and, you know, going out of my way to apologize. It's like, well... I called you something you're not. Sorry, I didn't mean, you know. Uh, But, you know, instead of of responding as a civilized person, what I find is certain people who are very religiously political will attack the person. They will attack you directly, Mm -hmm. not whatever argument it is. So they'll bring up stuff in your past. They'll bring up stuff in your present they'll say things that they didn't like about you that they've like been holding in this whole time like if you only had agreed with me more i wouldn't i would still be your friend but because you have it then now i'm going to be your enemy and not only am i going to be your enemy but i'm going to lash out verbally have you have you seen that explosion uh on yourself or on others it's like absolutely it's like I, even though I've personally never been that kind of person, I personally personally never engaged in that kind of behavior. But I've seen other people do it to other people. It's like I've also had it done to me. And I was having a debate. When I would have debates politically, when I would talk about different political ideas and, and, and say that I disagree with somebody else's position, I just simply disagreed with it. I didn't attack them personally or anything like that when I just simply disagreed with their position, when I just simply questioned their position, they start calling me names. They start calling me stupid. They start calling me a coward. And, and, that, and, then, and then when I would try to tell them that they were being condescending and they were, that their behavior was disrespectful, then they want to get mad at me like I'm the asshole. Right. The thing is, all I was trying to do was have a civil discussion. Like I, at no point did I call you a name or anything like that. And when, when, you, when these people express their position, I, I would ask them questions to explain their position further. And then they always be like, no, it's a waste of time even explaining it to you. Go Google it. And I'm like, no, you're, I'm like, no, you're the person making the claim. So you should help me, you should help me understand your position. Oh, it's Maybe not, not my position to teach you, though. That's not my job. I've heard that. 
yeah, I've heard that. I've gotten that. And the thing is, is like, the thing is, like, if you want me to understand your position, if you want me, if you want me to be convinced of your argument, then explain it. That's all I want. Instead of just all of this vicious, vicious behavior. Yeah, I, I've I've seen the same thing. I, I call it that that instead of religion, because people are well religious about religion. Uh, you can be religious about politics. You can, you know, have a deep uh, the the thing that you value most or cherish most can be anything. It can be God. It can be a political idea, an ideology. You know, whatever that is. I've always encouraged people to challenge whatever it is you hold most dear, because if we're unwilling or unable to do that uh well that's a problem because if i can't reason with you as a fellow human being uh come to some sort of compromise then if i'm locked out from that the only thing i can do is remove you so that you're not an obstacle to what i want to do or and removing you might mean jailing you or might mean removing you from the country or might mean killing you or whatever and those are bad things. Those are not good options because we want reasonable options. I want to be able to talk to people uh, and, and not have to resort to that. And what I see with Antifa, for example, and where we're going to take it out to the streets and we're going to get these fascists. So I'm like, who, who, who are the fascists? Who are you talking the about? Is, the thing is, like, these anti-fascists are ironically the real The most fascists. fascist people there are. <laughs> Because they're the ones stepping on our freedom of speech. They're the ones stepping on our government. They're the ones on our safety. And that's what fascists do. Yeah, I, I talked to somebody that, that was uh, pro, I don't know if they were an Antifa, but they certainly were for it. And I, I said, you know, they said, well, if you're not with us, you're against us. And I was like, well, there, there you go. That's it. That's the end of, that's the, I, I said, that's the end of the conversation because I can no longer reason with you. So you're making it that violence will be my only recourse. If I can't talk to you, then it, and, and that's what you seem to want because that's what you're doing. And I don't want you to do that. I want you to talk to me. Exactly. I, I, you know, I want to be able to talk to you, and we're going to disagree, but we're and we're hopefully going to come to a compromise. That's negotiation. But no, we're we're you know we're going to get all these fascists. Who are you talking about? Who? Speaking of violence, earlier this year, Richard Spencer got punched in the face because members on the far left think it's okay to punch the Nazis. Yeah, I got and into that. And, into and that. then a few, and then like a few days later, or a few weeks later, or a week or so later, there's Chris Yossity, Steve Shots, Kevin Logan create this big ass live stream about the women's march and how it's okay to punch Nazis. And and the thing is, watching that whole thing just made me cringe because you claim to be for social justice and you claim to be for the welfare of people. So how do you think it's okay for you to punch people that you just agree with part that bothered me one of the parts that bothered me was when is that when kevin said that he wouldn't lose any sleep over richard spencer being punched in the face um richard spencer shouldn't be saying shouldn't be saying the stuff that he says sure i disagree with it but i wouldn't wish anything violent to happen to him yeah that's I, i've seen that and uh, that as well with the you know it's okay to punch a nazi meme and I, I argued against that. No, it's not okay to punch anybody if, if unless they're punching you first. And, yeah. it's retali- and even then, there's other ways maybe you can, you know, get out of that situation. And the way I see it is that un- unless somebody is a an immediate physical threat to me or somebody that I care about, then I wouldn't go out of my way to use violence upon them. Right. It's just somebody... Just somebody, just, just somebody saying some words may hurt your feelings, but that's not the same thing as physical violence because Richard, like Richard Spencer having having his white supremacist opinion, that's not a crime. Whereas it is a crime if you assault somebody, if you punch somebody in the face. So wouldn't yeah. that make you worse than Richard Spencer? Yeah, well let's let's well the, yeah and I they said we're taking we're taking the control the Antifa guy said that, you know, they're 
I'm more than happy to, to do what's illegal because somebody has to do it. So they completely feel justified in ignoring the law because they feel like they're right, which is, no, you have to work within the system. Uh, let's talk about hate speech because that's been on the border of being coming illegal in America. In Canada, certainly there are laws about this. Yeah. Uh, what the bleep is hate speech? What does that even mean? And Honestly, is, is this something that should be illegal? Should I be not allowed to... A, a recent video I did, uh, well, not recent, but a while ago, I, I posted a video where it's like, nigger, you can't say that word. And I just said it over and over again, making the point that words only... <laughs> they only matter when they're used against somebody. I wouldn't call you... Right. I wouldn't insult somebody unless they insulted me. And even then, you know, it's kind of... I've gone to their level. I should take the high road, you know, but mm -hmm. it, it doesn't mean anything unless you make it mean something, you know? Yeah. Honestly, and, the way, honestly, the way I say it is like hate speech is, sub, is such a subjective term because what I may find offensive may be completely different from what you may find offensive. And no, I don't think quote unquote hate speech should be illegal because that's protected under the first amendment. Right. Or at least it was the last time I checked in the far left is trying to take that away. And like I said, I, I believe that people should say whatever the hell they want to say. And honestly, uh, as far as the word nigger, unless it's used against me or another black person in a derogatory way, I don't really care that much about it. If you say it with an A or an ER, if it's used in a joking context or if you're quoting something or singing a song, I don't care about that. But if you're using it to be legitimately disrespectful, sure, I may be upset. Sure, my feelings may be hurt. But my way to, it, to impose violence upon you or try to get you arrested or ruin your livelihood, I would just think you're a fucking asshole and not associate with you anymore. That, w that, w that, w all, that, that would be all it would be for me. Yeah, uh, well, the argument that I've heard about hate speech is, well, we don't want to give these people, whoever these people are, a platform. So, you know, we don't want to have this let's say somebody from the uh the uh panthers or the kkk on the air and i'm like well why not you know say on a radio show well why not have them debate that would be amazing to listen to but no we we shouldn't do that we because why because that will create other people that didn't exist before to come to agree to those opinions. I, I don't, I don't see that as, you know, I don't, I don't know that that's true because I mean, I've been making videos about being a skeptic and I, I only know one person that deconverted into skepticism, but he was already on that path anyways. I didn't really have anything to do with that. So I don't just say that, I don't just think that, that, you know, if you put these ideas out there that suddenly someone's going to convert, because of it, and even if that's the case, that's a consequence. It's we need to know what people believe. Mm -hmm. But but it's said that no, certain speech is so bad and so hurtful and so wrong that we must make it illegal to say this. And I I just don't, I can't agree with that. I, I and it seems that you don't either. You know? I don't I don't by any means. It's like. It seems like the progressive left is pushing communism at the same time. They're pushing fascism because they want to they want to ban certain ideas. They want to ban certain speakers from like for example, Ben Shapiro, they and Molly Yiannopoulos, they want to ban those two from their college campuses. Hell, they even had riots around Ben Shapiro and Milo Yiannopoulos. Yeah, that was some and of the most pushing. violent and destructive rioting I've seen, in, and I've been around for a while. Well, yeah, I, and the know, thing my is, my whole life, well, I haven't seen something this bad. Uh, the the Rodney King riot, that was really bad. And I that wasn't was, around for the Rodney King riot. Huh? I wasn't around for the Rodney King yeah, riot. I, so. I remember it being on TV, so yeah, I'm a little bit older. But uh, there was something pretty legitimate there but still not something that i think i don't think people should ever riot but i could at least understand it whereas oh no somebody's coming to talk 
it's time to destroy some stuff and set it on fire. Really? Just don't listen to them. Or have somebody talk that you want to talk and after he talks. Have somebody else. Invite your own speaker to talk and, about whatever and, it is. I don't exactly, get it. Exactly. Exactly. And I was wanting to say that about the riots at Berkeley, I don't, as I was thinking to myself, it's like Black Lives Matter and Antifa, their riots and the inauguration riots weren't even this bad. A lot of people are concerned that civil war I've seen is in the brewing. Now, I don't, I don't think, I think that's, that's far from being true. Because Roaming millennial, come to think of it, Roman Roaming millennial made made a video about that exact about that exact topic. So you don't you don't think it's too much? Uh, and are we calling for the end of the world? Or are we or are we? Uh, I think it's too early to jump that gun. Though I do, but what do you think about that? Um, I wouldn't. I I I wouldn't go as far as to say that it's world or anything like that because. We don't know when the end of the world is, if there ever is an end of the world. So I think that's a little that's a little bit too hyperbolic for me. It's, it's just over dramatic. Sure, it could if we were to have a a, a complete civil war. Sure, it it would destroy some shit. It would buck up various things, but I don't know if it'll end the entire world. Well, no, it wouldn't. It would. You no, know, I don't. I don't think so. I don't. I don't even think that we would get to civil war. At least, I certainly hope not, or anytime soon. But you know, the threats that I see building against freedom of speech and then compelled speech. And since you're in, you you said you were in a university. Let's talk about that because that's in universities are very left. So, are you in classes where you're required to say things that you don't believe? Um, the thing is, is I, I don't know if it's necessarily where I have to say things that I don't believe, but however, when I, when I hear stuff that I don't believe and if I, if I were to offer a rebuttal, I would get some serious pushback and it's not only in class, but on my college campus in general, there are a few times where people would have different, different opinions that, that I disagreed with and I got serious pushback from it. For example, I was calling Bill Nye's gender theory bullshit, and then this girl came out of nowhere, said, no, 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 it's not bullshit because gender is a spectrum. I'm like, no, gen gender is biological. There are only two, male and female. And then she started talking about non-binary this, gender queer this. I'm like, no, those are not legitimate concepts. You can, those are gender identities at best, but they're not actual genders. Yeah, and then and then she started bringing up the Bible and slavery. I'm like, that's <laughs> not even what we're talking about. Those are two completely separate conversations. And then she was like, no, she was like, I'm a history major. I know this and this and this. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, gender has nothing to do with history. Gender is biology. Yeah. So yeah. if you're talking, if you're trying to talk, like, so if you're trying to talk about history, why would you bring up gender? Right. And, Gender and slavery are not really comparable. No, so not, not, I don't I don't understand why she brought up slavery and the Bible and stuff like that. And I also had conversations with people about Islam. A lot of them believe that Islam is this really peaceful religion. And I was trying to tell them, no, it's not because because they op that religion oppresses women, my oppresses women, gay people. And they support genital mutilation. And I would talk about the Islamic terrorists. And then their response is, what about the Christians? What about the white people? And I'm like, Christianity has reformed over the past several centuries. Yeah, Islam not, clearly has not. not. And, and, and also they brought, and also to the white people thing, I said, being white is a race. Islam is an ideology. So that makes no sense. Yeah, I, I I got confused at one point thinking that Muslim was a race and Islam was the religion. And they're like, no, 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 no. And somebody clarified it for me. I'm like, oh, so I can say Muslims are bad. Great. Muslim is, is evil ideology and uh, we don't need it. And the, uh, the whole thing that I had was I'm not going to make the stipulation not all Muslims. I'm not going to say it uh, other than right now, obviously. But 
I, I when I say Islam is bad, I don't need to include the the hypothetical few that aren't bad because they're not bad, and I don't have to worry about them. <laughs> so I don't need yes. to make any sort of you know clarification when I'm saying Islam is bad or Muslims are, are is a bad religion. It's a bad thing. It's a bad. I I don't need to I don't need to clarify that there's some that are good people because I don't need to worry about the good people. They're not going to hurt anybody for me. Insulting Islam and insulting, uh, you know, Muhammad or or whatever. If you know, they're not going to do anything because they're good people. Right. The bad ones that are going to do stuff that I'm talking about. Duh. I mean, it's it's obvious. And when I say smack about Christians, it's like, well, not all Christians. I don't even need to make that because it's obvious who I'm talking about. There, there's a subset of Christianity, the evangels who are screwing with things and trying to get creationism in school and, you know, not doing vaccines or whatever nonsense they're up to. And if the I thing, the problem I have with, the problem I have with evan, evangelical Christianity at, at this point is they try, they not only try to push creationism in school when there is various evidence to support evolution. And, but that's a whole, that's a whole nother discussion. Also, they push, anti-vaccines and anti-same-sex marriage and saying that a lot of the things that I support, they're absolutely against. I support gay rights. I support vaccines. I support yeah, it, criminal it, justice reform. It's so weird with the, with the multiple gender thing because we're getting this narrative that gender is this illusionary construct but then that means that you shouldn't have to change somebody's body because it's just, it's made right. up. The thing, so transgender the thing is, is like, it's like you can't have it both ways. The thing, <laughs> right. The thing is like Blair White made a video about, about this whole thing. She was saying something, she was talking about the whole multiple gender thing. And she, she was saying that if there are all these multiple genders, then how come I need to transition? to to the next gen to if we could just choose whatever gender we wanted then she's also brought up the fact that uh the this whole idea is basically bullshit and i agree with that 100 percent. and the thing the thing is if you're supporting transgender people if you believe then why are you pushing this non-binary and gender queer gender queer narrative i'm ashamed to admit i used to subscribe to this kind of subscribe to this kind of stuff and then i realized that this is bullshit yeah well gender dysphoria is a real phenomenon uh, i know because you that's not what i'm arguing i'm talking yeah, no, about no, I, yeah i know i know you're not uh well but people will of course take what we say out of context so we have to make clear you know that that, that gender dysphoria that is somebody that it, it appears to be male but their brain is actually female or vice versa and that's a real thing now, uh, mm -hmm. but this idea that, well, then there's a non-binary, non-fluid, extra pan, multi-dimensional, whatever, you know, it's like, okay, I'm an attack helicopter at this point, you know, whatever. Oh, I made a joke about the whole gender identity thing. I was like, I'm like, hey, guys, I identify as a Nintendo 3DS today, and sometimes I'm a Nintendo 3DS, and sometimes I'm a PlayStation 4, and my pronouns, <laughs> and my pronouns are Nintendo... Sony and game, and then somebody lost their shit. Somebody said that making gender identity jokes are not funny. It makes you an asshole. Well, I, I totally <laughs> support your 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 uh, choice, and I will say that woman, you've got game. Thank you. Yeah. Th yeah. Like, the thing, like, honestly, the only thing that was funnier than the joke that I told was this person's reaction, and also. When I was talking to a friend, one of my friends at school, we would talk shit to each other. We would play around and stuff like that. And I called him a faggot. This one person, these, these two people lost their shit. They was like, you shouldn't say that. That's disrespectful to the LGBTQRSTUV community. And oh I'm like, God, I'm, not, gonna... I'm not using it in that context. You're, you're disrespectful. I'm using it as a Alphabet joke. Community. I'm using it as a joke. The, yeah. uh, this person, the person I was using it towards, he wasn't offended. He was laughing and he was joking with me. And this other person said, 
you're not supposed to say that because I'm pansexual. You can say what I want. Then she was like, if you want to be ignorant, if you want to be ignorant, that's, if you want to be ignorant, I'm not going to, if you want to be ignorant, I will punch you in the face. And I'm like, I'm not even doing anything. Yeah. And there was another person that was, that, that, that was joking about an anime and that had a rape reference in it. And he said, he was talking about that particular instance was funny. And then another, and then one of these same people got triggered because of that. And it just created an awkward situation for everybody for a, for a good 20, 30 minutes. When, you know, it, it, it's so ridiculous because, you know, you already said that you have to self-censor in, in many ways where, you know, it's just, it's just easier not to speak out your mind in these classes or whatever because you just know that there's going to be these idiots that stand up and are even willing to threaten physical violence if not actually perform it because you said things that upset them. Right. And, and Talk about, that's not a safe space, is it? You're not really safe to say what you want to say. That's That should be protected. Not their right. feeling. I, 100%. The thing the is, I think... It don't matter. You know? <laughs> the feelings, end of discussion. If yeah, you can't, absolutely. If, with you, you, you can't preach. face the truth. That's your that's your problem. You're, you're preaching you to the choir here. <laughs> the thing is that if you can't accept that there that there are only two genders, if you can't accept that black people can be racist, you need to wake up. In fact, I've seen more racist black people than I have racist white people. By the way, just wanted to put that out there. Is there is there a patriarchy? I've been hearing a lot about this. <laughs> what do you think about? <laughs> It's not my job to explain it. Go Google it. Oh, okay. <laughs> What's that patriarchy about? Well, now, if now, if there was a majority of women running things, then it would be a matriarchy. So would it, it be better it, then? I don't know. I think it'd just it, be the same crap, you know, just different people running it. And... The thing is, I don't really think there is a patriarchy, to be honest. There are men running things and there are women running things. So if the patriarchy existed, wouldn't it be just men running things? Like, let's not take into account that there are women CEOs, there are women doctors, there are women lawyers, there are women who run their own businesses, there are women who who are managers of restaurants, there are female scientists and how we even had we even had a woman president during the last presidential campaign right and you're, and you're still trying to tell me that there's this patriarchy well, well to be fair hillary's actually a lizard person so i don't think that <laughs> so you I was like hillary then again <laughs> hillary is a like, hillary is chucky's it's the reincarnation of chucky so i don't know yeah, why i brought up it, hillary clinton it wasn't really a w- real woman but <laughs> one, one day we'll break that barrier. Ryan Landers in chat asked uh, that you know when you're identifying as a 3DS, do you support LGBTQ Bert? Absolutely. <laughs> like uh, I do, but only when uh, he he clears the level. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, th- <laughs> that was kind of that was really good there, Ryan. Thank you. Um, yeah, I mean. We we laugh at this stuff because it's it's more like nervous laughter because it is serious stuff, you know. Yeah, it absolutely it is. The it's fact like, it's like a lot of people, are, I can't get a lot of people back. say that we shouldn't talk about. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Sorry. It's like a lot of people say that we shouldn't talk about social justice anymore because I'm, I'm like I think we still need to talk about it because um it's it's the crap that's going on in our government. It's running our is running our college campuses, is running our mainstream media, is running our entertainment industry and pushing laws that pushing laws towards social justice. For example, in California, they're making non binary a third gender. And I think oh that's God. why we still need to talk about SJW stuff. Because I don't see it going away anytime soon. Sure, we may be winning the war on YouTube. However, in real life that's a whole nother discussion. 
Yeah. Um, I want. I can't get over this idea that you self-censor, uh, and I, I suppose it's up to you in the end, obviously. Uh, but you really feel that, you know, in any given class or outside of class, that there's certain things that it's just not even worth saying your mind because you might get it. You might even could you get thrown out of school depending on what you say. As I do, quite honest with you, I wouldn't be surprised if it reached that level. That's because I know that, you know, with teachers, they've been hauled in for, you know, questioning, you know, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I'm sure you're familiar with the Lindsay uh, Shepard thing. Lindsay Shepard, how how she got how she got suspended from how she got suspended from showing a Jordan Peterson video. Yeah. And she didn't you know, she, she this was the first time she'd ever seen him. So she didn't know what she supported of his or not. But it doesn't mm -hmm. even matter. It's like. You can't you can't do this because because it's gonna hurt somebody's feelings hypothetically. And so yeah. it's not just the teachers, but it's also potentially the students. When I went to college, there was a uh, uh, Republican and and Democrat um, uh, what do you call it uh, clubs. Is there anything like that mm -hmm. now, or is it just? Is that we don't have anything we don't have anything like that on my campus. Are there clubs though? Um, there are clubs. There's the uh, the closest thing to like political clubs, where it's like I'm in the political science and law club on my campus, and there's the Gay Straight Alliance, and I'm trying to think of what else. I don't think there's uh, I don't think there's any young Democrats or young Republicans clubs here, which there should be. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that was I remember that, and I wasn't really interested in politics at the time, but now that I'm old, I am, I guess. <laughs> Although you can be interested at any age, it's better that people get interested young because, you know, you you can there there's a lot to learn and a lot to know. Uh, yeah, I think I, I think I'm probably the only one out of all of my siblings that's like fully interested in in politics and social issues. Have you in in your classes now? Do you have to? Are you forced to take classes that don't make sense for your? Um, for the degree that you're aiming for, and I don't know if you want to list that out or anything, but yeah, yeah it's like I, it's like I'm, it's like I, there were classes that I've had to take that were required to take that were part of the um core curriculum and things like that, and one and one of the one of the things that kind of ticked me off about being in college is that we had I've had professors that were pushing this privilege narrative and this oppression narrative, and I had one professor bash Trump. After, right after the elections, like honestly, at the time I didn't vote for Trump. At the time, I felt that he was a piece of crap because everybody else thought he was a piece of crap. So I didn't care at the time. And looking back on it now, I'm like, oh my god, do, do these people really have to push their political agenda? And I had one professor that straight up told me that that we that he believed in white privilege. And in one of my classes, one one class that I'm taking this semester, um. She, she was talking about race and gender, about how certain people are oppressed and how certain people are privileged. And then she showed a story on black on Atlanta Black Star uh, regarding regarding like issues in the black community. And I, and a lot of the students in the class are these are really big on the whole Black Lives Matter social justice thing. And they, a lot of them were talking about how they fear getting shot by the police, and I I really wanted to tell them that they were that they were falling for a false narrative, but I, but due to the political climate today, I found it best to just shut up. Well, I mean, you know, if you're, you're safe on YouTube to say these things unless they find you here, and then then it could all it could be a problem. I don't know, but. Yeah. If, honestly, the only places where I can really discuss my political beliefs fully is on certain political Facebook groups, on my Twitter, and on YouTube. And it shouldn't be that way because, I mean, school's all about, or it used to be at any rate, you know, learning that there's differences. Because that's what I keep coming back to is that hypothetically you're doing all this so that you can get a good career. Not just a job, but a career that would last you know, a, a good long time because a job is something you have for a while and then you replace, but a career is, you know, what you have for your life. 
And mm -hmm. so hypothetically, you should be learning not just how to do those things, but other things that will let you work with people that aren't going to agree with everything that you say. I mm -hmm. mean, goodness gracious, they're going to have different ideas about how to complete project X, Y, and Z than mm -hmm. you. And how is it that these snowflakes, and I don't know what else to call them, are going to survive the corporate world at all? I just don't see them. I just, I fear what that's going to look like because there's going to be a lot of people not able to make it out there. Yeah, I honestly, I, I, honestly, my opinion on it is this. I believe that they're in for a rude awakening once they graduate. I really do. Because in the real world, they're not going to cater to your non-binary, gender queer safe space. Oh, yeah. And, and you know, I had made this thing about the uh, transgender in the military. And I think that Trump wanted to get rid of it. I don't know if he did or didn't. But I didn't know that there was trans people already in the military. I thought there's no way that they would get in because MEPS has this really rigorous filtering process or it did when i went in what uh, branch? i went in the navy but it was true it's the uh, meps is uh for every branch so it doesn't mm -hmm. really matter i know that that's the what branch you were in yeah navy all right yeah but meps is the thing that you have to do before any branch so their filtering mechanism is pretty darn high or at least it was so i didn't think that any transgendered person could get through that because of the physical things and because of the mental things, but apparently they have or did, and and learning again or relearning that it's a mental that that trans that uh, what's it called a uh, gender dysphoria is a mental issue. I'm going back to my original position that no, you can't be in the military with a mental issue. It's it's not good for the military. It's not good for you. It's not it's not a good idea. And yeah, and, people and, with mental issues, they are, they, are, they are more likely to break down under stressful conditions. Right. And, and you might make the argument, well, but no, it's, it's not that kind of mental issue. And it's like, this is the military and it's not a fun place to be, trust me. <laughs> <You know>? uh, <laughs> and I guess the ones that are in already and serving aren't having problems. But that if that, you know, if something went wrong and, and, and something can go wrong very easily. Um, we're on the bill for whatever happens to that person in the long run. Mm -hmm. The VA, which is the, the Veterans Affair, their lines are already huge in waiting of getting an appointment. Like, I have VA stuff. Um, mm -hmm. My next appointment, it, uh, I made three months ago for uh, an appointment that I'm getting this month. So it's like... Mm -hmm. You know, you're going to add even more to that by hypothetically adding in transgender problems on top of all the other right. problems that there are. And it's like, look, yes, the military in this regard should discriminate for the, for, because we don't know what it could do to that person. And we're, we're worried about that person. And mm -hmm. like, you know, if we weren't on, if they were willing to sign a waiver saying, I don't care. You know, whatever happens to me happens, maybe then, but it's just too much of a, but they could hurt other people if they had a mental breakdown. You don't know. And mm -hmm. and it's too much of a question mark. And and so I said, I, I am back to supporting the, the ban, if you will, on transgender in the military. Although my support about it probably doesn't matter one way or the other. But now if somebody disagrees with that stance, great. Tell me why. What logic do they have? What arguments do they have? But I didn't get that. I got, well, you know, you, you didn't, you know, I'm mad at you because you didn't know that trans are in the military. Well, I didn't know. I'm sorry. I didn't know that. Okay, fine. Now I do. But my stance remains. So do you have an argument ag against or for it? or And I don't know if people do or don't, but rather than giving me an argument, it's this appeal to emotion. Mm -hmm. And that I don't have any, I, I don't know what to do with that. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, is like, honestly, I can understand both positions regarding transgenders and militaries. Like on one hand, I can understand 
dysphoria may be a great risk in serving the military. If transgender people are already in the military and they are otherwise really competent, I don't really see much reason for them not to be able to serve. Yeah, it's a, it's a complicated issue. Uh, I, I would assume that if a ban went into place, that the people there would stay in, but no further new people could come in or something like that. Um, mm -hmm. And it's not just about the funding, although that is a small part of it. Um, but it, it's more about, you know, concerns about, you know, mental health and, and physical health as well. Um, you know, especially, I don't, you know, it's like you don't want somebody that's had surgery, you know, down there, so to speak, running around in a field. Mm -hmm. Because if uh, somebody didn't stitch something right, something's going to fall off. You know? <laughs> right. <laughs> that's going to ruin your day. <laughs> you know? Like, well, we had to kick him out of training, and it was going to be a seal, but uh, <laughs> we found something on the field, sir. It might be yours. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah. I mean, um, on my Facebook feed, talk about transgender and the transgender people in the military and how much they Trump's decision regarding it. I was thinking to myself, like, they don't really care much about the issues. They just want more virtue signal points. Yeah, it's hard to know if, you know, because I am I care about the person, the hypothetical individual that's going to go in. And I've been through that process, so I know how difficult it was. And, you know, they're grabbing your, your stuff and they're poking you and, and, and prodding you. And it's all part of the dehumanizing process of boot camp, you know. And mm -hmm. MEPS is part of that, too, even though you're not in boot camp. MEPS is this very clinical examination of your physical and mental stuff and it mm -hmm. it's not fun because it's very dehumanizing you're a number and it's in out and you know you either qualify or you don't and that's there to protect you if if somebody uh isn't fit physically or mentally they just don't get mm -hmm. to go in um and that's it makes sense because it's not just you that you could potentially harm. It's other people around you, you know, so, mm -hmm. you know, when one guy falls off a ship, that ship has to stop and turn around, which takes a long time. And they're sending out a speedboat already and everything that they were doing that, that was part of the mission is stopped for that one person, you know? And so if they jumped and off because they wanted to jump off, you know, it doesn't matter. You still have to stop and go try to save that that person. So it, mm -hmm. it's a concern, you know. But at any think point, about think about people with mental health mental health issues in the military. There's a great risk associated with it, and Donald Trump is right. I agree with Trump's position in that regard. Yeah, and the other thing I've noticed is that you can't – Trump can do no right is what I've seen. Is um, no, And it's like, look, I disagree with a lot of things. That he's, I don't like the stuff that he's doing for the environment. I'm questioning the a lot of different choices and whatever that they're making and, and so on. But it's like when – it's like you, you even dare to agree with one idea, and that's it. Forget about it. You know, that's, you're never going to... Yeah, I just, I just wanted to bring that up. It's like, like the liberal media is, is like, has this big, huge Trump. And I, I told somebody one day, it's like, Trump, it's like, the mainstream media is obsessed with Trump more than Trump is. I disagree with some of his ideas. I disagree with his... It's like, I disagree with his position climate change. However, I do agree with his his overall position regarding illegal immigration, but I disagree with the concept of building a wall. I, de it's like, I defend Donald Trump more than most people I go to school with, so then they label me as a conservative, even though I try to explain to them that I have beliefs from both sides, and then I realize that I'm more liberal than I'm conservative. The other thing that I find odd is that 
people will say, and I've seen this memeified many times, that if you if you voted Trump or if you will vote Trump, you're a racist or whatever, and it's like, or you're an idiot, or go ahead and the other thing people are now doing is go ahead and unfriend me if you even defend, you know, this this person or anything that they do, or if you vote are, for them, or even people, it's like why? To be why? <laughs> are these people supposed to be tolerant? But yet they're being intolerant as the uh, as they accuse the other side of being. <laughs> yeah, I I I, I uh, it's 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 weird because. Uh, like him or not, Trump is at least the death of PC. I hope because yeah. he doesn't he doesn't care about political correctness. That's whatever. Yeah, if he, the he thing is, if he doesn't if he doesn't accomplish anything else, I would like for him at least he killed to keep that. our freedom of speech intact. Yeah, we can restore the environment in four years. I mean, you know, <laughs> if we're gonna ever work <laughs> on the environment, we should have done it years ago. But if we're ever gonna start, we can still do that in four years. Yeah. It's on Monday when I was walking on my college campus, just a casual day doing whatever. I walk into a group of my liberal peers and acquaintances. They were in this big circle jerk bashing Donald Trump and the first lady, presidential they were. And, and I was thinking to myself, I was like, I've heard this crap time and time and time and time and time and time again. So they need to come up with, they need to come up with some new stuff. As I, like, I've never seen people be so disrespectful to a president in my life, and then people talk yeah, about how you know, it, it, that brings up a, another thing that was odd that uh, the students stood up and walked out on the VP giving a speech at their um, at their graduation ceremony, and I said he didn't bring up politics. I listened to the whole thing. He didn't bring up politics once. And I said that is the office of the VP. It's not the person anymore. It's the office giving these people something that you couldn't, you can't get usually. You know I mean, get the mm-hmm. VP to talk at your graduation. That's pretty. That's a one time in a life deal, you know. Mm-hmm. So, so that's a that's a gift you're getting given, and you're walking out on it because you don't want to vote for the guy. You know, that's just stupid. And oh no, they! I'm proud of these people walking out because they, you know, stood up for what they believed in. I, well, they stand. Yeah, I don't I, know what they believed in. I think they're idiots. That's all I know. <laughs> is is I I can respect people's freedom of speech. Is like if they choose to walk out of a ceremony because they disagree with, that's fine. Because in my opinion, I think that's a lot better than outright outright banning somebody or. Being violent towards someone. Yeah, I agree with. I'm I mean, if, of, I'm not gonna make too, protest too, in that way. That's yeah. fine. I, I, it's just, you know, I separate the office of the president and the VP from the person. You know, there's certain mm-hmm. things that the VP or the president can do that it's like they're doing this as their office, not as them. You know, and we've got to view it that way. So when you know the pres the v- VP is giving a a speech at your graduation, unless he's saying vote for me, it's not, that's not to me the time to protest, but I'm fine with the way they did it. It, it, it. I just don't, I just don't agree with them. You know, I'm fine that they did it that way, but I don't, I don't think that they should have, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but, uh, what other, yeah. okay, so we, 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 we touched on all the politics. We offended everybody now. Let's talk about <laughs> a little bit because that's what I do on my channel. You now, I I don't I, I used to be a Christian uh, for a long time until uh, I was thirty two. I'm thirty nine now, so whatever the math is on that seven years, like seven yeah, years. Yeah, you can do math. See, I am not in college, so I can't do math anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so about nine years, I've been a skeptic. I, I don't believe in God. I don't believe in heaven, hell, angels, demons, devils. Spirit, souls, etc. You name it, I probably don't believe it unless it has, you know, empirical evidence, repeatable test, or a logically mm-hmm. coherent argument. Um, what's your stance on on anything? Do you believe in stuff? Do you not believe in stuff? Is there some things that you kind of believe in? Where, what? Let's prod your your views on 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 God and the spiritual realm and all that. Right. In terms of religion, is like. I would consider myself 
for many years. I was a Christian. I went to church religiously. And then over the past three, four years, I started noticing my started to dwindle and I started to ask questions about God and do research and look at different theories and things like that. But if but it felt like I wasn't getting any solid as any solid answer aside from anecdotal evidence because everybody perceives God in different ways. So I would freak out out I, I would have a point in time where I would freak out if 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 I believed in the wrong God, I'll start to think, what if Christianity is wrong? What if Islam is right? What if whatever? And then, and that would, and then whenever I would pray, it, it would feel like I was just saying empty words. It's like, there's been some times where I would try to pray even in recent years. It just felt so, so, and, and I'm at the point where if there is a God, great. If not, then I don't really care that much. So either, I mean, your your personal belief is that would it be uh, you don't know that there is or isn't one, or would it be you don't believe in one, or would you even want to quantify it? Um, it's like it's like I don't right now at this point I don't know if there is or isn't one, so it's kind of hard for me to believe or not believe in one when there is no solid evidence that goes either way. That's a good. That's a good stance. I think that's a fair stance. What about other ideas? I mean, is there a soul or a spirit or, you know, anything uh, like that? Or um, it's like nothing like that. It's, it's just. I mean, it's like I believe that souls and spirits. But whether or not they do, I can't determine that, and I don't think anyone else can either. And uh, what about uh, anything other than that that's like, uh, you know, energy or a force or karma or things like that? Um, it's like karma is one of those, one of those like kind of complicated things for me because they, because people say that good things happen to good people, bad things happen to bad people. I realize, and they equate that to karma, but I realize that it's not necessarily true because sometimes good things happen to bad people and bad things happen to good people. So the, the, uh, I'm the concept of karma is a little bit skewed in my opinion. Well, what about uh, something more mundane like luck? Do you, do you think there's good luck or bad luck or, or is that? In terms of luck, if I, to an extent, yeah. Certain things just happen by chance. Yeah, yeah. There's lots of random. You don't think it, you know, if somebody rolls uh, well at a game, that you know, we call that lucky. But is there like some force governing that? I don't. I don't believe in that. But some people no. do. Necessarily believe that there's this that there's this random force controlling everything. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so let's see. So, don't know if there's God, so people are going to be upset about that. Let's see. You uh, are pretty, you know, open-minded, so that's bad. I mean, come on, man. There's got to be... <laughs> you know. Uh, yeah. And in terms of my beliefs on creationism and evolution or whatever, I obviously believe that evolution objectively makes more sense than creationism does. Like I said before, there there is um documented evidence of evolution, like through fossil evidence, through carbon fourteen dating, what have you. There is solid evidence of evolution, whereas creationism that was concocted by religions and people have different ideas on creationism. For example, in Christianity they believe that God created the earth in six days and rested on the seventh. And I'm not 100% well versed on how Muslims or Hindus be believe in creationism. And through, with Hindus, they think that everything was reincarnated. So all, all religions have different beliefs on creationism. So it's kind of hard for me to follow that when there are so many different 
variables involved in that sort of thing? Yeah, I mean, it it seems to me relatively safe to go with what science has said is, is probably true because you have a wide variety of people from political and religious background that all agree to this one thing that we collectively call evolution. Not just that, because that's not anything. But they agree upon it because there's overwhelming evidence. And there's multiple tests that we can do on these things. So it's just a matter of, it's not, it's, I don't need to believe in evolution. I can know it's true because there's all these things that confirm it. You know, yeah, to I, me, per, to me personally, I don't think evolution should be a should be position of a belief or a theory when it's been grounded in fact throughout that throughout centuries and millennia. Yeah, yeah. With well, in in science, of course, the word theory means something different than how we use it. I don't know why we don't just change the word and just use another yeah. word. But yeah, Ryan wanted to know if you uh, believed in destiny. It, um, and I suppose that also would play perhaps into free will. Do you believe in that you have a certain path of destiny or anything of that nature? To be honest with you, I can't answer that. Okay. Because because I honestly don't know. That's a, that's, that's a fair answer. I don't know is an acceptable answer. There you go, Ryan. Oh, shut up. No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> and no more like, questions. I'm, the thing with me is, like, I'm not going to pretend to know something that I don't. Absolutely. Well, who is it that said uh, the beginning of wisdom is, is knowing that you know nothing? I don't know. Aristotle? Sounds like him. I'm going to yeah. say it. Even if it isn't, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> you know that Gandhi said, be careful of what you watch online. Wait. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. Um... <laughs> Let me ask you um, about your view on, because I uh, we talked about a little bit of the Women's March, and I asked what that was about. Nobody could really give me a straight answer what it was supposed to be about. I don't think it was about anything. Um, do women have less rights than men? No. <laughs> do do men do uh, do do women have rights that men don't? Do they have do more? women have rights that do women have rights that men don't? Yeah, or or I should say, do do women have more rights than men? I suppose I should say that. It's like I wouldn't it's like I don't think that women have necessarily have more rights than men. But however, if I were to look at this more objectively, I would say that in terms of divorce cases or child custody cases, or women get more of the benefit of the doubt than the man does because. Everybody knows if you're a deadbeat dad, you're looked down upon. If you're a deadbeat mom, no one really says anything. So in that re in that regard, I would say that that um women would have women would have more privilege than men, and I think that both genders have have their advantages and disadvantages in society. Yeah, I I I I. I completely agree with that it, it's fine it's funny because i'm trying to find something i disagree with dang it <laughs> we're gonna find something that we you disagree you, on you're gonna find debate. something that you disagree with me on yeah i want to i want to debate you dang it we got to disagree on something <laughs> 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 but, but uh yeah well i mean you know if we did that'd be great uh because it's good it's good not agreeing with with something because then you get to find out that you're wrong and that mm -hmm. that means I learned something new, you know. Mm -hmm. And and I've tried very hard to to learn how to be comfortable and happy with being wrong. It, it, mm -hmm. Is that something that you've had that you found uh, easy or that you struggle with? Um, as I've like I've struggled with it for a while, and then I, and then over time, as I started getting into different discussions and things of that nature. I found it I found it easier to accept that I may be wrong about some things. Like for example, when I was talking about religious freedom being a liberal concept, saying that it's a conservative concept, and then I did, and I explained that it was a classical liberal concept and then the liberal very liberal various centuries ago, that is not the same thing that it is now. Look at liberalism today. 
they absolutely don't have religious freedom because they are, a lot of them are Islamophiles. Yeah, I don't I don't know what that means to be an Islamophile. It's like there's plenty of good reasons to be afraid of it. What I mean what I mean by Islamophile is that a, a lot of them kowtow to Islam for whatever oh, okay. for whatever reason. So it's oh, an Islamophile, not a Islamophobia. I'm sorry. I got the my brain went backwards on that. Yeah, they they yeah, there's a lot of apologetics for Islam out there that aren't Islam and it's like and I don't the thing I, even in the it's like you know. Um, it's like, I was about to bring that up. It's like Nightmare Fuel and um, Billy Bong made videos about how a about how atheists in the atheist community are apologetics for religion when they don't believe in religion. What? Like, well, Nightmare Fuel is like Nightmare Fuel is talking about how Armored Skeptic would be an apologist for religious ideas, and <laughs> and the thing is, if you don't, if you don't believe in Christianity or Islam, then why do you continue to be an apologist for it? That doesn't make any yeah. sense. I, 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 one thing is I, I, I definitely am against Islam. I, it's just the problem I have with making a particular video about it is their arguments aren't, they don't even have an argument. That's the thing that's difficult to, it's hard to analyze something that somebody doesn't have. <laughs> <laughs> Most of the Muslim mm -hmm. videos are not in English, so that makes that's another problem as well. But <laughs> if, if I find one that actually has an argument to analyze, I'll do it. Or if somebody sends me one, I'll definitely do it. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, but you know, Christi I, I'm familiar with Christianity, so that one's you know an easier thing to go after. Um, but it's an evil ideology. No, har no holds barred. I, I have no respect for Islam as an ideology. There's nothing good in it. It it is it, it is the only, you know it is completely twisted. It ruined the Arab world because before Muhammad they were they were on top as far as mathematics and science goes. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they I mean they they in algebra they invented that. You know, yeah, that's yeah. you know, and so many of the some of the stars in the sky. I mean, they had wonderful advancements in in knowledge and science. And then this guy Muhammad comes along and you know ruins everything. Pretty Muhammad's much. a pedophile. That well, yeah. I mean, that's a kind of a side thing too. It's like, oh, you know, it's just another thing that's a problem. You know. Uh, I hope I didn't trigger anybody by saying that. Well, you know, it's okay because he's Islam, so it's fine. You know. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like seriously though, I don't get why people keep pushing the, this idea of. Islam being a peaceful religion when, like I said before, they're pushing for gays and women and stuff to be murdered and want to sacrifice their children in the name of their God, or so to speak. Yeah, uh, I, I, you know, the thing is, you know, if, if there is if there is a deity, let it figure it out. You know, you don't need to, you know, they're going to punish me, so you don't need to do it now. But, of course, they believe that they do. So that's what makes it dangerous. It's like, like, <laughs> no, no, really, your God doesn't want you to kill me. Trust me, I talked to him just the other yeah. day. <laughs> he told like me just now he doesn't want you to kill me. It's like in terms of, like, religion and stuff like that and the concept of God, I think that one particular God is just as likely to exist as any other. Let's yeah. take all the world religions. Imagine that they were all little, that they were, that there were little random strips of paper in your, and you put all of them into a hat. One that's pulled out is the right religion. So uh, based on that analogy, based on that, let's say the random religion is, um, Islam or Hinduism or Buddhism or um, Zoroastrianism or Scientology or whatever. So what? So based on that, just as, would be just as likely to be hell bound as any atheist or agnostic. Yeah, you know, we could we could all be screwed or we could all be saved and not know it. But I think the the thing to worry about and be uh, concerned with is here and now. I mean, we know this. We know that we're here, uh, whatever this here is, you know, so that's what I, you know, I'm worried about is, is the life here and now, not whatever hypothetical afterlife there might be. And 
uh, you know, whatever gods might exist to judge me hypothetically, well, that's, you know, that's not up to me anyway. So whatever, judge away. I can't stop you from doing that. Um, <laughs> you know, so whatever, if I'm screwed, I'm screwed. Okay. Yeah. You know, it's not, it's not something that, you know, worries me at all. Uh, well, cause I don't, you know, I don't believe it. Any of it. But uh, <laughs> with um, what, what, I'm trying to reach the string of thought that I just had, and it went away. I <sighs> think. Nope, it's gone. The Women's March. Women's March, yeah. Women having, oh, yeah, right. The, oh, well, you know, equality. And yeah, the about... equality of outcome. Okay, that's right. STEM, STEM, we need to push women to, to want to be in the STEM field. Uh, this, this sort of, and, um, Biologically, uh, women tend to prefer certain things, and men tend to prefer certain things. They've right. they've demonstrated this with other primates. They they put toy trucks and toy dolls in the in the primate enclosure, and the boys will go play with the trucks, and the the girls will go play with the dolls. They don't tell them the 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 ding primates which one to play with. They just go do it. So classical conditioning. Yeah, there's no conditioning going on. It's just that's what they do. You know, the boys will play with trucks. The, the, these are monkeys and uh, chim chimpanzees and other primates. They, you know, and, there is no and the, and the um creationists like to say that monkeys and chimpanzees have no monkeys and chimpanzees have nothing in common with you know, humans. Well, they're they're just silly. They're they're you know I mean <laughs> you might as well talk about the flat earthers at that point. But yeah. Um, yeah, that's a resurging group, and that's uh, but but there is a push for uh, women to be in in STEM. Have you been? Have has anybody ever said you should be st uh, told you that the degree you're going after is the wrong one because you're a woman? Um, no. And so that personally, okay. Have you been like encouraged to go after a different one or? Um, no, I haven't. It's like I think everybody's been mostly um supportive, as supportive towards what degree I went in. So if I was going into something like gender studies or whatever, I would expect some kind of pushback. Yeah, I should. If, yeah. Oh God. Well, gender studies is completely useless as a, <laughs> as a, as completely and utterly. There's nothing. There's nothing at absolutely zero true in it. I mean, just nothing in it is true. Period. There, Economists, the economists have already debunked the wage gap, so oh, well, there's why they keep pushing this narrative. They, it, they said that might, the wage it gap. Might, it might be fun, you know. I might do college again just to take a gender study, just to find the one thing that is true. <laughs> See if there's any one true thing at all. I don't think I could find it. I don't. I, I mean, I would. I would. I would question if they told me that the sky was blue. You know, <laughs> I'd look out of it. Actually. <laughs> It's gray today. I don't know about that blue. I think blue is a social construct there. You might be wrong. Uh, <laughs> Did you just assume the sky's color? Yeah, you just assumed the sky. And the gender <laughs> of the sky, probably. Blue is a boy, of course. You know, gotta, man, now I'm going to be sued for... Uh, it's like blue, blue, is the, blue is the boy sky. Pink is the girl sky. Gray is the gender queer sky. <laughs> so the rainbows, rainbows, the transgender sky, and you know the rainbow is the LGBT sky. <laughs> well, I guess that makes does that make uh does that mean the daytime belongs to the light, and then then the dark time is is daytime. Daytime is daytime is for white people. <laughs> night is for black people. No, I think it's the opposite because, because... you can't see when it's dark. <laughs> <laughs> We need to be able to see you. We can't see you in the dark. It's just be eyes floating in the sky like like <laughs> It's like I can't see you in the sun. Yeah, exactly. Right. So I need to be out there at night because you can see me. I'm so you know, I'm so freaking and broke. As I was speaking of race and stuff like that, I was looking at something in interesting about how melanin gives me superpowers. Yeah, well, you know, in a sense, you can be out in the sun uh, a while. I mean, like, yeah, longer, I, could, not, I mean, eventually you'll still be at risk. You know, it's just like anything yeah. else. But. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. The thing is, is it's not necessarily about that. It's like I was watching a Tariq Nasheed documentary about how black people have these have these incredible superpowers. <laughs> I didn't know that. I was, I learn something new every day. It's like Tariq Nasheed has this documentary called Hidden Colors, and I watched a little bit of it. Just silly pseudoscience to say the least, and he all documentary out called or movie out called 1804 I don't know. Mm. yeah you got to take those things with a very large grain of salt and and make you know do your research and make sure that you know they're not just talking out of their rear end you know because there's a mm. lot of that that there was that a uh, quote documentary quote called uh, what the bleep do we know and the whole thing was uh paid for by this cult that wanted to promote this one gal's teaching that, you know, that this channel or psychic that lives in this trailer park, I'm sure she has tons of power. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, she's doing so well for herself, right? You know, I'm calling. <laughs> yeah. Well, she made enough money <laughs> to make the documentary, I guess. So, you know, somebody's paying her, but, um, <laughs> is there, <laughs> let me t ask you about your kind of own ethical code. Is there, some part of you that is tempted to use this narrative of 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 non privilege that you supposedly have to a privilege to gain an advantage because you're disprivileged as a black woman you are so oppressed uh, by the system is there is there kind of this like I could use that and really get ahead in my classes you know I could use that the thing is like. The thing is, you gotta understand, Mister Privileged White Man, Black Woman. So you're not gonna sit here and tell me how <laughs> to exercise my privilege without having any privilege, because you're the you're, right. But that's what people don't, don't have privilege. privilege. You use your non-privilege as privilege. <laughs> <laughs> as well, about, like, you know, seriously, can you? Could you? Or is there is there sort of a a, a, a temptation to say, hey, you know, I'm in a minority and I'm a woman. Can I get an extension on this test because I'm so oppressed? Is there a temptation of that, or I've never been? I've never even thought about that because I want to be given the same fair shot as everybody else. Well, now I've tempted. You. I don't want. I don't want to be treated special. But now I've tempted you with this. Now you know you can use this. You know, so so if you're ever behind on a did. test, mm -hmm. you could, but you want. So you actually have better ethics than what they want you to have? <laughs> Man, I don't know. I guess the that, thing I guess is like I can the thing of honestly come to think was like I think that black people have a certain privilege too, which is to be racist and get away with it. Well if if they're That's saying one, that this thing, they're they're saying that this idea is true and they make it true by saying it's true, even if it wasn't true before. Within the context of that university, it's like, oh, you're underprivileged, so you should be given certain advantages. And then it, it's like, well, here's those advantages because we said that you should have them. And to not... I, I, I mean, it is amazing that you would see that and say, that's not for me. I'm not going to do that because I, I just want to be treated like everyone else, and I don't I don't believe in that narrative. That's that's awful. And, and it's like I can't believe I forgot to throw this card in, but I'm going to anyway. I also have a disability on top of that. Oh wow! Well, now you just got all sorts of points, you know. But yeah, to 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 stand up and say no to any of that takes a lot of courage, especially now. Yeah, you know, and, that, it yeah and, and and so what in a way. Saying? It shouldn't be that you have to have courage to stand up for what you believe in because what you believe in should be something you're able to say without any worry that you're going to get stomped over. And now that's not that's not the case. Yeah, the thing is, is that I could simply say something about how I believe that black people and white people have the same rights. I, or I could say that be just as racist as a white person or to sex as, the man, as a man and then they start going into how it's a systematic construct i'm like no it isn't because racism is the um 
it's the discrimination of a race of discrimination of someone based on their race the race is superior to others and that's what a lot of these pro black marxist marxist groups like to push as as i've said that, that narrative and i'm going to i'm going to say that black lives matter and i'm going to say but I, but i'm also going to say that because black lives do matter and it is okay to be white all lives matter and it is okay to be it is you were born as i can't believe in 2017 that video about this yeah well the current the current date there is this fallacy of of the current date meaning anything that you know it's 2017 we should x no that's not the date the date of the year has it, the thing is that bad ideas have always been around and there must be those that are willing to fight for those ideas that matter and mm -hmm. in the crusade of of freedom of speech this is what we've been talking about really i mean we 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 few you know we have to be even willing to put our lives on the line potentially to defend free speech and it is that old motto of i disagree with what you say but i will defend to the death your right to say it and i find myself in that position you know more and more as this weird ideology sinks its teeth into our universities and our colleges and and slow into politics it's i don't know why so many people eat it up i don't understand that neither do i it's like I, like i said before at one point in time i was victim into, falling victim to that narrative and then i i, I got out of that mindset to think critically and rationally to walk around my campus or to walk around society in general and everybody is basically garbage when they don't even realize that it's demonstrably untrue well i i, I hope that you know do you, would your unit do you think that they would ever host uh somebody like peterson or milo or anybody like that or or ben or any of these people or would they just be like no we're not going to have that person here it's like i i think they would be too fond of milo or ben or because they three of those guys will totally destroy their narrative i heard That's one person talk about Talk about how Milo Yiannopoulos was garbage without any evidence. Milo Yiannopoulos garbage because he trashed feminism. Do you, have you had speakers there that you've listened to that you agree or disagree with? Or I don't. I don't. I haven't, you wanna, I haven't huh? heard, heard any. I haven't had any big time, any big time speakers on on this college campus. When there are uh, one of these days, I hope there is. Honestly. No, uh, uh, maybe maybe you could try to get somebody. I don't know. It's it's pretty hard to do it, but you know you got to have a club behind you or something. Uh, I think what you're doing is is fantastic, and that the, these these ideas need to be discussed as you've been saying. And even if your ideas change, that's good too, because I mean that's the whole point, right? Is we we you know we can change and grow as we learn you know more ideas i mean i started questioning socialism and i was like you know i was like super pro bernie and now i i wouldn't vote for him for anything and you know i was trying to lay out why mm -hmm. i was thinking that on facebook and and getting a lot of questions about what i said and how i said it and i'm like well you know this is what i've seen and, and what i've learned and you know trying to explain everything and it wasn't you know i wasn't really coming out right and I, I and it was it felt very much like you know instead of saying oh you know here's reasons why not to think that it almost felt like i was getting attacked even though i wasn't so yeah it's a new and, arena um, it's like it's like during the campaign i w i was pretty pro bernie too then and then um the the dnc stole the stole bernie's nomination gave it to hillary yeah, I agree that with was, that. I, that, I that, thought that was, I thought that, that was pretty bullshit because all the polls showed that he would have 
beaten Trump. All, every yeah, poll that yeah. they did showed that people would have favored him to to win, and yet they're like, no, it's Hillary, and it's like, what? And I was like, as I at first, as like temporarily, I was on the Hillary bandwagon, and then once I started to look into her, I'm like, oh no, I'm not voting for, I'm not voting for this demon. We're trying to yeah, push me to vote for Hillary, and I'm like, there was no exactly? good vote. There wasn't, you know. There wasn't. Bernie, Bernie should have run as independent, but maybe he will this time. But I wouldn't vote for him though. I don't know who's gonna run. Uh, I really don't. Um, you know, but I'm gonna do my research on it definitely because it, it matters. Um, and and what you're doing it, it matters. So your your channel is uh, Chris, Kristen. I can't words. Say your channel because I can't say anything apparently. <laughs> Thomas. What's your channel? The, the, my, the channel is just my name, Christian Thomas. Yeah, Christian Thomas. And uh, you're also on uh, you, Twitter. Do you want to give out all that stuff? And, and my Twitter my Twitter is at Molten Snowflake. So M-O-L-T-E-N. Flake. And I'll, I'll put everything in the description as well. I think I'm lagging here. Hold on. I think I'm not sure what's going on here. Did I lose you? Uh oh. Um. I'm not sure what happened. I think. Okay, there it goes. I froze up for a moment there. I thought I'd lost you. Oh, no, you, you didn't. Uh, Hello? Yeah, there it goes. Okay. Oh. Okay. <laughs> we had some technical issue. I'm not sure what happened. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, I'll put all your links and such in the, in the description. Uh, I mean, I could go on for hours, but I, I think we've been going for quite some time already. Um, right. And... My brain is is become mush, so I'm no longer able to hold uh, a deep enough. conversation. Fair <laughs> enough. <laughs> but I thank you for this, and I hope people check you out and subscribe to you and all that. And and you know, e even and especially if they don't agree with you, that they should listen to what you have to say. And if they don't agree with you, engage in, with you in a rational manner and present good logical arguments against what, what they don't agree with rather than, you know, do not attack the person. Always attack the argument. The message. Yeah, right. always. Um, thank you for uh, for agreeing to be interviewed by me. I don't know that I did that well, but, you know, you whatever. Did, I don't know what did, I'm doing. You did an awesome job. Yeah, I don't... Look, not knowing what I'm doing doesn't stop me from doing it, so... Right. This is the, Honestly, <laughs> this is the second channel... This is the second channel that I've been on well, I, I hope that, you know, somebody bigger than me that usually does uh, politic, uh, social stuff will, will, will also get you on board. Because uh, it's not my normal thing, like I said. But, you know, I think these things are really important. And I, I think you articulate them way better than I could. So, you know, so Chris, you. Christian is, uh, you know, uh, she's got game, apparently. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, you can download her or, or play her on... A, PlayStation, or, or I'm not really sure anymore how that works. I identify. Can... I my my identifier, by the way, is uh, <laughs> my Lord and Savior, who I will com obey. So that so that's how you have to address. Me. So when somebody says, you know, they have to say, "My Lord and Savior, who I will obey," Deacon for demand, and that that would be great because then they they have to do what I want. Mm -hmm. And it's <laughs> great. If they don't, then it's a it's a hate crime, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> all right everybody uh thanks for watching be sure to subscribe thanks for having me if you don't lobsters will eat you and unless and until we have a complete coherent argument we have to continue to be skeptical of the conclusions that doesn't make any sense in this context but i say it at the end of videos okay mm -hmm. is there anything you have the last word christian go ahead um subscribe to my channel follow me on twitter at like M-O-L-T-E-N.
and Snowflake. And like I said, please subscribe to my channel. I have too many subscribers. And with that being said, Kern Veteran Man, it was a great pleasure. I, I really, really had fun. And I hope to do more live streams again in the future. And that being said, stay skeptical and stay woke. And